the two trades that I am about to show you has the most simple and basic analysis. And that is to show you trading doesn't have to be extremely complicated. All you are simply doing is waiting for the most optimal conditions for your analysis to then execute your trades. You are not entering when the market conditions are unclear. You are entering when the markets are extremely clear to you. You are extremely confident in where price is going to head to. So if you look here, what was the weekly currently telling you? This is my higher time frame. It's fairly simple, right? All the way from back here, we have just been in a bullish order flow. There are no signs of a complete market reversal yet. If this isn't clear to you, jump onto the monthly, jump onto the higher time frame. You can see that the bearish price action, they were simply retracements, right? On the weekly, yes, they gave you a market structure breaks to the downside, but look at the monthly. Your higher time frame monthly direction is clearly bullish. So your overall direction on the weekly still remains bullish, even though it's giving you a market structure break or market structure shift to the downside. Unless this market structure shift signifies a complete reversal on your monthly time frame, then I am still looking for bullish price action on the higher time frame. And I know that this bearish market structure break on the weekly is simply just a retracement on your monthly time frame. As you can see here, that is exactly what you get there. All it simply does is come down into a discount rate on your monthly time frame and then it expands higher, right? So that is if you wasn't so clear on where the weekly bullish order flow is showing you. Again, price is fractal. Whatever time frame you're on and it is not clear as to what direction it is currently heading in, jump up. Look at the larger time frame. So if you look here, weekly, we had this market structure shift. And from then on, discount rates were constantly being respected, right? Premium rates constantly being disrespected. So when price retraces into discount rates, it is accumulating more long positions to then pair up their long positions with the existing shorts above here to exit out for take profit. It's as simple as that. Internal to external range of liquidity or rebalancing old efficiencies and seeking new liquidity. They both mean the same thing. That is simply how price moves. So from here, all the way to here, that was the same thing that happened. You had extremely deeper retracements, but you also had minor retracements coming into internal range of liquidity and then taking out external range of liquidity. Again, respecting discount rates and disrespecting premium rates. So the fact that from here to here, we were still bullish, that means going into this current price action, I would still be favoring for longs. Of course, when price prints you bearish candles, supported by a number of bearish candles, that is where you could anticipate for a possible retracement. And here, on the lower time frames, this segment in price, you wouldn't necessarily be favoring longs. And instead, you will be looking for shorts into potential discount rates where you can anticipate for price to realign bullish from and continue higher because your overall order flow is still bullish, right? These major bearish candles over here did not signify a complete market reversal. Even though, again, you had a weekly bearish market structure break to the downside, on a monthly, that was just, you know, a pretty minor bearish candle. Hence why, when price came down into this bullish order block, this was where I started to favor longs again. So, dropping down onto the daily, this was what you had here. You had this minor swing low. Price comes into that minor swing low and look at how that daily candle closes. It closes with an extremely large bottom wick. That is showing weakness in price continuing lower. And this is where aggressive sellers are being absorbed by passive buyers. Once the aggressive sellers have been absorbed by passive buyers, this is where aggressive buyers are stepping in, overpowering aggressive sellers towards the end of this candle's lifespan and having a significant bottom wick as its closure. That is essentially what has happened, right? If you go down to the hourly, you can see here it becomes much more clear especially after you had this market structure shift to the upside, right? So the hourly is now bullish and your daily is showing weakness in price after sweeping this swing low. If you had a full body closure past that swing low, then that would be a different story. You would anticipate for this extreme swing low to get taken out and to complete the market maker sell model. But remember, market maker models don't necessarily get completed if it is against the higher time frame direction. And in our case, the higher time frame direction is of course bullish. So another thing that supports this sweep and our anticipation for higher price action is the fact that it happened within a weekly bullish order block. So that is another support for price to continue higher. This is where we can anticipate for realignment. 
Now, if you play the candles out to the day's trade, you can see that you had the respect of a discount array and disrespect of a premium array. Here, you had this volume imbalance. And here, you have a rejection block. So, this rejection block is a discount array. This volume imbalance is a premium array. Price retraces after sweeping this or swing low, and it respects this rejection block after Thursday had a strong bullish candle closure and a strong bullish candle print. This bullish closure closed past this premium array. So that is your first sign that we're possibly getting a market reversal. Remember, this is all happening off of a higher time frame discount array. So that makes it much more likely. And if you keep playing price up, that is exactly where you get at. Price continues to pump higher. This volume imbalance failed to hold price to distribute lower. Not only that, but also this overall imbalance over here. We have a full body closure with a large expansion past this imbalance and past this volume imbalance. So overlapping premium rates are being disrespected. So now it's clear that this swing low is a valid sweep and this is where we are anticipating for higher price action. With that in mind, this now becomes my buy side liquidity. So here, Wednesday, Thursday was when I took those two trades. If you look here, this was my idea outlined Thursday and then these were my executions. Right, so going back, it's clear that on a daily now, we are bullish. Higher time frame, still bullish. Right, we had our sweep on a swing low. So going into Thursday, I would be fearing for a bullish expansion. Now, jumping onto the hourly, playing into Thursday, look at what we get previously on Wednesday. You had a swing low. It's not a major swing low, but it's a swing low nonetheless, right? So the fact that we get a sweep on a swing low with a body closure back within the range, that is further support for, the, for your hourly continuing higher and for your overall price action continuing higher. So after you had the sweep, this swing high gets taken out. Price comes down, respects this bullish order block. And as you can see from here, we are just continuing to pump higher. This creates another bullish order block because the open, it had a full body closure past the open. So now this is a valid bullish order block. This is where we can anticipate for price to retrace back into, which is currently what it's doing, to continue higher. Because the anticipation going to today is bullish. Yeah, this is New York session. Look at what price does. It's showing you another respect of a discount array. This aggressive bullish expansion higher tells you that we disrespected this premium rate and a bullish trend is going to continue. With that in mind, because of how aggressive this bullish candle is, that will signify your expansion phase in today's, in this day's daily candle. Here, you had your manipulation. Aggressive movement higher, that is where you are anticipating for a bullish expansion. And this is your overall drawn liquidity. Whether that gets hit on Thursday or it gets hit on Friday, it doesn't necessarily matter because you're not always going to be targeting your overall drawn liquidity. And rather, the overall drawn liquidity is to show you where price is gravitating towards. Long story short, it helps you with your direction. So because 8am candle, we had a strong expansion higher. Going into the next couple of candles, this is where I would anticipate for the expansion to continue. Because of how aggressive this bullish candle is, I wouldn't necessarily anticipate for a complete market reversal to go bearish, right? It's very unlikely that the next candle is going to have a strong bearish candle. Unless there was red for the news, which of course there was none on this day, apart from 8.30 a.m. New York time. So if you play out, you can see the next three candles, that is exactly what happened. And this is where it throws a lot of you off because when you have that strong bullish candle, you do not necessarily want to enter somewhere around here. Imagine you jump down to a lower time frame and you see an entry pattern somewhere around here. This trade wouldn't necessarily look appealing to you because you are afraid due to the large expansion it's had already that it might possibly reverse from here. But you need to understand if price has a clear drawn liquidity and it is in line with your higher time frame direction, because of how close it is to this overall drawn liquidity, price should ideally just expand higher. This drawn liquidity should become a magnet for price. Ideally, you wouldn't want to be in one of the first to catch this overall long, but a lot of times that doesn't happen and that is fine. Once that expansion has been confirmed to you, you could look to catch the continued expansion of that phase and you could be confident in that continued expansion. So that is basically your expansion phase, right? AM candle, bullish closure. Next couple of candles I would anticipate for bullish price action. So now let's jump onto the five minute. You can see here that it was extremely clean. 
if I show you my positions here, these were my positions, 1.5R, 1R, which is in total 2.5R for the day. Look at what you get here. I waited for the 8am candle to close to give you my hourly bullish closure. That is confirmation we are in the expansion phase. So here, going into 9am's candle, price gives you another break off that swing high. When this bearish candle was printing, that was a retracement lower on your lower time frame. It came into this bullish order block. But my entry was based off this volume imbalance. Right, so when we had that bearish candle to reclaim this volume imbalance, that was where I entered. Stop loss below this swing low. And this is the importance of your stop loss placements. They should always be placed at your invalidation levels, right? If that level gets taken out, that is where you would no longer be looking for trades that favour your anticipated direction. And that was my swing low over here. Realistically, if price comes down, takes out this swing low, I would no longer be looking for longs because my 5 minute is no longer aligned with my hourly. I would have to wait for another 5 minute confirmation, whether that's a market structure shift or a market structure break. Hence why my stop loss was below here and not all the way down here. Right, because if price takes out this low, it's likely we're going to continue lower. And not only that, but the fact that it's here also provides you with a much more higher risk to reward ratio. Right, so that is what happened there. It tags me in and it pumps higher. Again, it's literally just rinse and repeat. Now that we're in the expansion phase, it's extremely easy to capitalize off the expansion phase on the lower time frame. Because the expansion phase, you're going to just get a number of bullish candles print. And that's, that's the case. Your M5 should ideally just print higher lows, higher highs, and higher lows, and so on. So this was my second entry. Price continues higher. Once price retraces with these two bearish candles into this imbalance over here, that was my second entry. Stop loss below the open of this bullish order block. Realistically, if you wanted to play safe, it could also be below this swing low, because it follows the same principle as my previous trade. But the reason why I put it here is because of how impulsive price action was currently. Your previous three candles before this retracement was pretty aggressive. So it was unlikely that price was going to mitigate this bullish order block anyway. If it does mitigate our bullish order block, I would anticipate it to just mitigate the body. If it comes any deeper, it's likely that this low was going to get taken out. And that is something that just comes with market experience. I've seen this happen a number of times. When price is impulsive, especially when your hourly is also in an expansion phase, it's very unlikely you're going to get deep retracements. You had this move up, you didn't get a deep retracement, you had a minor retracement and the price continues to pump higher. So that is something that, that just comes with market experience and testing. Hence why my stop loss was just below the, the body of this bullish order block. Taps me in and here I targeted 1R just above this swing high. And that is essentially all you need. You don't need to always look for home runs. Lower R trades tend to be more consistent and most of the time provide you with a higher win rate. So if you go into the hourly now, there weren't much targets on the hourly apart from this overall drawn liquidity or this over here. And if you keep paying price out, you can see it continues higher to that buy side liquidity by Friday London session. And those were my two trades taken on Thursday. Fairly simple, right? You don't have to overcomplicate anything. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I will see you guys in the next one.